morning. Today we're gonna to be covering um, the summer reading novel, The Woman in White. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go chapter by chapter, give you a briefing on everything. And after that, then we'll work out with the three packets of questions that we have. And also we're gonna work with the vocabulary. I wanna clear that out. Um, vocabulary is simple, is the one that is in the back of your novel. But before we leave, I'm gonna try like to cover it a bit, okay? So basically we know that chapter one, two, and three are from the perspective of who? Walter. 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 Okay? So it's Walter, <coughs> Marion, Walter to end up. So to begin the novel is Walter. In between the novel will be Marion. And then in that ending of the novel, we're going to see Walter take back, okay, that, that narration of our novel, okay? We know that in chapter one what happens we have the encounter between Walter Hartwright and who? Not the water. woman in white. We know that the woman in white is looking for what? A cab to go to London. And we know that he, she has escaped and she's looking for something in particular. So it's kind of strange for Walter, okay? He's gonna ask questions, they're gonna have a brief conversation, boom. And then the woman in white will disappear, okay? Chapter number two, Walter's gonna go to Limeridge House. We know that Walter gained what? He gained a job as an art teacher. And remember what happened, he saved the life of Pesca. And this friendship, this bond that is gonna be created um, from Pesca and Walter is gonna gain Walter that opportunity to be a teacher at Limeridge. And he's gonna be teaching not only Laura, but he's also gonna teach who else? Mary. It's going to be both. Why? Because they're really bond together, so they're both going to take those art classes, okay? Um, we also learn that they're both half-sisters. We also learn that Laura has a huge resemblance, a huge similarity with the woman in white, okay? Also, Walter and Mary will have a conversation about this strange woman in white, okay? Uh, Chapter number three, everything's gonna be peaches and cream. Gonna be an awesome summer at Limeridge House. Walter, so far, so far, is enjoying his time at Limeridge House, okay? We're also gonna know that he's gonna fall in love with who? Laura. With Laura, we're gonna start that um, love from both sides. It's not only from Walter to Laura, but also from Laura to Walter, okay? Uh, also, we're going to know that Laura is engaged with who? Sir Percival Bly. Okay. Also, we're going to Laura is going to receive an anonymous letter, giving a warning. Okay. Also, we're going to have a new character, Mr. Gilmore, and Mr. Gilmore is the lawyer of the family. Okay, and he's going to come to do that settlement of the family. Not only of the family, he's going to concentrate in the settlement of the marriage per se of Laura and Sir Percival. You know that there are going to be several um, stipulations that are going to be um, pointed out in that marriage, okay? Um, also, um, Sir Percival is going to know about this letter. They're going to ask Percival about the letter and, and Percival is going to have to give explanation um, to Laura, to Marion um, about what happened in this letter and who's this um, Annie Catherine, okay? Uh, also, we know that Laura is going to be very unhappy with this marriage. Um, she has to marry because she already made a promise. But she has that compromise, that commitment with her father. Very good, okay? So, chapter 1, 2, and 3, we're done. Now we're going to go to chapter number 4. And that chapter number 4 will be from the perspective of none other than Maria, okay? 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 will be from the perspective of Mary. Okay? Uh, first of all, Gladys can explain that Anna Catherine, Catherine used to be a loyal servant, and everything that happened, why she was so locked in this island, blah, 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 all of that. Okay. Also, it's going to explain that Annie had mental problems, so all those things are going to lead up uh, for him doing that favor to the mother of what inheriting that asylum for her um, own benefit. Okay. Uh, we're also going to learn that in case of the death of Laura, 
What will happen with the money? It goes to Sir Percival Glyde. But what is the most important thing in this settlement? There's something that is hypercritical, the, the kid. If they don't have kids, then there's more money going to Percival Glyde. So do you think that Percival Glyde will love to have a kid? No. No. He is going to omit kids because then he could get more money. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Gilmore is very um, concerned about this settlement. Why? Because he is not agreeing that if she dies, everything will go to Sir Percival Glyde. So we see here that Mr. Gilmore is having a certain concern about the settlement that they're going to do in that marriage. Okay? Very important to point that out. Uh, chapter number five. Um, after six months have passed, Mary will come to Blackwater Park. What is Blackwater Park? It's the house of whom? Sir of Sir Percival. Percival. Very good. Okay. Um, Percival, Laura, and also the Count are going to come from where? From Italy. They're going to arrive from Italy. Okay. The purpose of the Count. The count is going to be this person that is going to be watching every single step of Sir Percival Glyde and is going to keep them in check all throughout the novel. Okay. Um, Percival Glyde is going to learn about the visit from Mrs. Catherine. That's going to make him angry. So, starting to get this stuff here in this novel. And he is going to insist that Laura signs some documents. And we know that he's going to be pushing throughout it for her to sign documents, but Laura's going to hesitate. And that attitude of Sir Percival Glyde is going to start to what? Intensify as we go along. Okay? Chapter 6, we're going to learn that Laura and Marion are going to go um, to the old boathouse, and they're going to see a strange figure. You know, who's that strange figure? You know, that is that Annie Catherine, okay? They become scared, and they break up, they go home, okay? Someone is following them too, and we learn that it's not Count Fosco. So Count Fosco, bless you, it's not the one that is following them. So they're going to go again to the boathouse, and they're, they're going to meet face-to-face -face with Annie Catherine, okay? Uh, there, we're going to learn that Annie Catherine is going to reveal that she has a terrible secret about Sir Percival Glyde. But it, it's not clear what is the actual secret. Okay? And again, like the same thing that happened in Chapter 1 with Walter. She's going to get all hyped up, all scared, and then she's going to go away. She's going to run away. Okay? Chapter 7. We're going to have the roof conversation. Well, not the roof conversation per se, but the, who's going to be in the roof? Uh, Marion. Marion is going to be in the roof, Try to listen to the conversation that Count Fosco and Sir Percival Glyde have. Okay? Very interesting. What's going to happen during that conversation? It's going to start to rain, and that rain will be a huge, it's going to have a huge importance in this novel, because out of that rain, Mary's gonna get what? Sick. And this is the break that Fosco and Percival get to change everything and let like, you readjust their planning okay? and their strategy that they're having throughout it. Okay? <coughs> we're gonna learn about the plot from Fosco and Percival Glyde to obtain the money of Laura. So we're gonna learn that. Uh, Very important is going to come out the resemblance of Annie Catherine and Laura. So that's going to be huge in the changing of plans. Okay? Chapter 8. Now is where Marion, after all the spying and all that info, she's going to get sick. And she's going to be in bed. She's going to be taken off. She's going to be taken care of. However, huge things will happen. Okay? 
Um, what happens with Laura? They told her something that the Marion went to where? That she was. She went to London. They told her she went to London. But what happened? Marion was what? She was in another room. So they moved her to like like cover everything up. Okay. We're gonna see that Lady Glyde is gonna look very ill, very ill. She doesn't look good. And after a couple of days, what happens with her? She's gonna die. So, so far, everyone thinks that the one that is dead is who? Laura. So right now, let's pretend that we don't know that it's not her. So Laura is dead. For this point of the chapter, she's dead. Okay. So Lady Clyde, Laura's body, it's sent <coughs> to Limeridge and is like very like in the family um, grave. So we're gonna send Laura to Limeridge, she's gonna be buried, okay? So that's basically chapter number eight. And that's it with the perspective of Mary. <coughs> Now Walter is going to come back. And now Walter is going to go from basically from 9 all the way on to 15. Okay. So now chapter 9 will be from Walter's perspective. Walter will return to London and Walter is going to learn about the death of Laura. Super important. He goes to the grave and goes visit Laura. At the churchyard, he's going to meet with who? Marion. Okay, they're going to have an encounter at the at the graveyard. Very important. Someone will make an important appearance at the graveyard, and that's who? <laughs> Laura. So right there, we're going to learn that the person being buried there, it's not Laura. So we're gonna have that triangle, Laura, Walter, Marion. So Laura is alive, okay? We're gonna learn about a lot of things about Laura later on, but right now we focus that she's alive, okay? Uh, Marion, Laura, and Walter are gonna rent a flat, and a flat is like a small house <coughs> in London. So they're gonna rent a flat, okay? Um, chapter 10, Walter's going to learn the whole story about what happened. And she's going to explain that the one that was put in that asylum was Laura. And all the things she had to do with one of the employees of the asylum to get Laura out. Laura, we know that she's not going to be the same. So when Laura comes out, she will never be the same throughout the novel. So she's not going to be the same Laura that we saw in the first chapters. Okay. Uh, <coughs> chapter 11 Walter's going to find out about Sir Percival's secret and Walter is going to go want to go to the church and look at everything to just uncover the secret that he has okay? one of the things he's going to be looking at is uh, marriage book records very important um, chapter 12 He's going to go, he's going to find out in the book that there's something wrong there, okay? Also, we're going to know that Percival is not a baronet and that his parents apparently were not actually his parents. They were not married, okay? So in some way, it makes Walter, I mean, uh, Percival Glyde, a what? A bastard, very good. Makes him a bastard. This whole situation is a complete flaw. Percival Gly is going to know that he's in danger, so he's going to go to the church and try to uncover everything up, like try to fix everything up. Church is going to get on fire. He's going to be right there, try to get out, and eventually he's going to what? 
die. He's gonna die. So a person will have done, but we still have who? We got Fosco. And who's worse? Fosco, I think, is worse than Percival. The mastermind, the, the brain out of all of this is Fosco. Okay. Walter's gonna receive a letter from Miss Catherine, the mother of Annie Catherine explaining everything. Remember that previously, Walter was trying to get some info from Mrs. Catherine, the mother, and he couldn't. And eventually, um, she's gonna open up to Walter and explain everything in that letter. Okay. 13. The death of Percival Glide is gonna be recognized as an accidental death. It's not gonna be a murder, um, it's not going to be an attempt to suicide. It's going to be just an accident that happened. Okay. Walter is going to receive a letter from Marion asking what? For them to move. What happened? Apparently they had a visit. By Fosco. And in this visit by Fosco, something happened. Then Marion says, Walter, we need to go. We need to, we need to move. Okay. <laughs> also, we're going to know that Laura and Annie Catherine are what? Or have sisters. So we're going to learn that. So out of the resemblance and all, they're going to tie <coughs> all the knots up and everything is going to be like point out and it's going to um, reveal that they're half sisters. Okay. <clears throat> By the end of the chapter, we're going to also learn that Walter and Laura are going to what? Going to get married. Now, why getting married is so important for the defense of Walter, of Laura per se? Why so important that because they're married, this is important? Why? It's not the same. It's not the same scenario that you fight for a woman that is your friend that to fight for a woman that is your wife. Like you as a male have to have more right to like fight and represent her and in some way like do whatever to uncover and fix everything up because she's in this case his wife. Okay, so that's very important. Uh, chapter 14, they're gonna return to London uh, Mary is going to find out that Fosco hasn't gone back to Italy. And we know why he hasn't gone back to Italy. There's something wrong there. Okay. Um, we're going to have the performance, which Visca and Walter are going to go. And we're going to see all this dynamic inside the theater uh, between Visca, between Walter, between Fosco, and there's a fourth person. A guy with a scar. That was a scar. So everyone was pointing out at Fosco and everything that was happening with Beska and Walter, but no one was thinking about the scar guy. Okay. <clears throat> Beska is going to reveal um, the story about the brotherhood to Walter, and that's going to clear out the site um, for Walter. <clears throat> We're gonna have that confrontation, Fosco and Walter. Fosco later in chapter number 15 is gonna write the letter um, from Count Fosco, and that letter, Walter's gonna use it as evidence, as proof, okay? Also, we're gonna learn that Count Fosco what? That he died, died, in Paris, okay? So we're gonna find out that Fosco um, ultimately died. So apparently they killed him with a knife, and what we could infer is that the one that could probably kill him was who? Okay. The guy with the scar, okay? The following year after Fosco is dead, um, Walter, and Laura's son is born, okay? 
So basically, <coughs> everything pile up with the mystery and that dilemma of the money and all of this. But eventually, as um, things started to clear up, the truth came out. Percival died. The truth came out of Fosco also. That we knew that Fosco wasn't the big guy that he like presented to be. Um, and there were a lot of people that were afraid of Fosco. So ultimately, Fosco is going to pay for his escape from Italy, from the Brotherhood. And eventually, um, he's going to pay off with his death. And after Percival and Fosco are dead, everything is clear. So now Walter, Marion, Laura to have just a normal and peaceful life throughout it, okay? So basically that will be it for the full summary of the novel The Woman in White. Thank you.